Hello, this is your first time. I'm Kyle. And I'm Michelle, and we're the Wandering Shores. So, for those of you who have been around a while, you know we love to boondock. And in today's episode, we're going to give you six, maybe seven, of our secret boondocking spots that we've stayed at over the years. Um, these are sites that we have not done campsite reviews on, and in most cases, they're right outside a U.S. national park. Yeah, we loved each one of them for lots of different reasons. And we'll kind of show you some of the highlights of them. We'll take you through some still images that we have from the location. And in some cases we have videos that have never before been released. We're inside now yeah. and uh, we want to, in the rest of the video, go through with you our top six free or almost free boondocking spots. And it turns out as we were going through the list, most of them are very, very close to National Mind, Park. So that some of the video clips that we're gonna be utilizing are actually video clips that Michelle takes every time we get to a new location for her family to let them see more information about the campsite because we don't do campsite reviews on all of our sites. So some of these will be clips from that. Some of them will be clips from when we've visited that area and done other things or adventures in that area. Um, some of them are horizontal, some are vertical, so please just keep that in mind. They were not necessarily filmed um, with the intention to uh, put them in a long form video like we are today. All right, Michelle, what's number one? Number one is Indian Bread Rocks. And where is it located? It is near the Chiricahua National Monument and Fort Bowie National Historic Area, and we went to both of those places. So yeah, a um, little information about this. This is actually one of our first boondocking areas that we went to in the state of Arizona. And we were actually there with our friends, James, Andy, and their beautiful daughter, Carmen. And this is a really unique camping site, and we're gonna be showing you kind of some clips along the way. Um, what was your experience there at uh, Indian Bread Rocks, Michelle? Oh, it was absolutely gorgeous. Just surrounded by all kinds of uh, mountainous rocks. Yeah, very and... unique uh, form rock formations, and you can yeah. see them in the videos here. Yeah, kind of reminded me a little bit of Joshua Tree, but just a little bit. Um, we had nightly cow visits from the yeah. cows that would walk through. Um, this is where we learned what about the cows? That they eat socks. Well, yeah, they, they ate our friend's sock, <laughs> but what else do they eat? Um, they prickly pear they, cactuses. Oh, that's right. Yes, Andy and I came across one just chowing down on the prickly pear. We couldn't believe it. And that's the only cow that I've ever seen do that. Um, they also have their, um, they have like a day use area, yeah. um, which kind of surprised me because this, this camping area is quite a ways off the main road. Um, but they had picnic tables and grill set up, um, that we actually used. 14 day stay limit at this location. And we're going to put for all these locations, please check the video description below because we're going to go through and put the exact GPS location. Um, maybe even the Campendium link so that you can get any updated information. Please remember, when we visited these locations, we're sharing our experience. Things may have changed. And you're going to see that in one of our locations here um, in a little bit. Uh, location number three, we just read on Campendium, has changed their uh, process there for um, camping. So we'll talk about that when we get to it. But remember, this is only as accurate as to when we visited there and as accurate as today, which is November 2023. Anything else about Indian Bread Rocks? Uh, no, but we loved it. We absolutely loved it. Yeah, you're probably about 35 to 40 minutes outside Cherokee National Monument, which will be probably by the time it is now next year, will officially be upgraded to National Park status. We've talked about that in one of our videos, and we'll link that below. But Cherokee National Monument has been promoted to National Park status. They just have to build the infrastructure in order to be able to handle the increased traffic. So. Spot number two is Duck Creek Village, Utah, right outside one of probably the coolest national monuments that we've ever been to at Cedar Breaks. Um, Cedar Breaks National Monument is gorgeous. It looks very similar to Bryce with 
zero percent of the crowds exactly yeah so it's it's a really good option we stayed when we were there at lava flats um you want to talk a little bit about lava flats michelle's got little, little notes little that notes. she's uh taken so if you see her looking down that's what she's looking at um there is a 16 day stay limit yeah. which is plenty of time you get there you stay a few days um or 16 16 days um it is close to town, and I really like that because I like to visit the towns. Um, Duck Creek Village. That we visit. It's yes. a pretty small town. It's primarily a ATV and during the winter snowmobile yeah. um, uh, area of, of Utah, but it is it is high in elevation. It's around 8,500 feet, I think. Um, there are some services in the area, and uh, you know, water and dump is available at a National Forest campsite not too far away and i think it's probably like five or ten dollars to dump what else did we do while we were there what else you got on your notes um well where our camping spot was um the, it is frequented by a lot of um, atvs um that doesn't really bother us but there's a lot of trails there where we camped at yeah so you're um, going to get some atv traffic so it's going to be a bit noisy during the day but you know they're not out driving in the middle of the evening no. it does get a little dusty obviously because those trails are are full of dirt and mud and it depends on when you're there but yeah mm -hmm. um lots and lots and at, in this clip we're going to show you i think michelle called them birch trees because i probably told her they were birch but i think they may have been aspen either way birch or aspen they're my favorite tree watch oh, here yeah. hi guys we left Bryce Canyon today and we're in our new boondocking site and um, you can see our camper there we are surrounded by birch trees Kyle is in heaven he loves these trees this is just a simple loop it doesn't go very far back you can see there's a travel bus back there and that's the yes loop. as you saw in that video that michelle did for her family we had a really nice spot it was pretty quiet most of the time there was only about three or four spots there there are some spots across the main street so be sure to check out duck creek village lava flats um while we were in the area we also got a chance to visit two of the caves that were there there was mammoth cave which is not to be con confused with mammoth caves in kentucky and Bauer Cave, and that's where, uh, as you can see, I had Michelle climb down into the abyss, and she was less than excited oh, about it. Yeah, it was very dark. So if you if you go on that adventure, make sure you have plenty of flashlights and or headlamps. Yeah. So that's site number two, Lava Flats outside Cedar Breaks National Monument. Secret spot number three, Sahara Creek Horse Camp. Michelle, tell them about that. Fabulous place. We loved it. Um, it is right outside Mount Rainier yeah. National Park. Washington State. Yes, in Washington State. Perfect location to be close to the National Probably Park. Probably about 20 minutes to the, the southern or the southwestern entrance to Mount Rainier. Yes, you do need the Discover Pass yeah. to camp there. The Discover Pass, to get the Discover Pass, it's $30 a year. And you can use the Discover Pass at pretty much any of the state parks in Washington. So it's definitely something worth picking up for $30 to be able to use it. Some of the campsites across the state are kind of size limited, so you're going to have to be careful about that. But our time at Sahara Creek was in september or october of 2021. But uh, Michelle, tell them a little bit more about that location. Yes, um... When we were there, we didn't have to make reservations, yeah. but like Kyle had mentioned, things have changed and you there is a seven day stay limit. You have to make reservations, but no more than three days in advance. Yeah, and I'm assuming because it's a state park, I don't know if it's through recreation.gov or the state, um, the state system for state parks there in Washington state. But yeah, that's something new. We just found out when we pulled up Campendium that somebody posted about three months ago that you now are required to make a reservation. They did not have to do that while we were there. They do have pit toilets, lots of great sites for rigs of all sizes with space in between. There is potable or potable water. I'm going to call it potable. All of you that say potable, please don't get mad and put it in the comments. But you can write a comment if you want. It helps engagement. Um, but there is potable water there right in the main parking lot. But it is a horse camp. So if you're afraid of horses, you're probably going to want to pick something else. But it's right outside Mount Rainier National Park. Anything 
Secret spot number four. Is Tom's Best. And this is located right near Bryce Canyon National Park. Probably about 25 minutes outside the entrance to Bryce Canyon. So it's really convenient um, and a beautiful, beautiful mm. spot for rigs of any size, really. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's a 16-day stay limit. Now, we didn't take a whole, actually, we looked back through, we didn't take hardly any photos here, um, and we couldn't find the video that Michelle had done for her family, so we don't have a lot of shots of this location, but it's one of the most popular spots for dispersed camping in Utah. It's amazing. It gets five-star reviews all the time. Mm -hmm. Here's a few spots, or I'm sorry, here's a few shots that we've um, borrowed from Campendium of uh, some of the boondocking there, but you're gonna love it. If you're looking to go to Bryce Canyon, it's really the place to be. There is Red Rocks Canyon or Red Canyon um, National Recreation Area, I think it is. There's mountain biking. There is an amazing paved trail mm -hmm. leading pretty much from the outs from right near the road at Tom's Best all the way into the park. So if you've got an e-bike or something, it's probably going to take you, you know, maybe half an hour to ride into the park. It's, you know, it's probably 10 miles into the park entrance there from uh, from Tom's Best. But it's a great location fantastic um, internet while you're there and I think if at the time for us it was Verizon and well at the time Sprint um, but which is now T-Mobile I'm assuming but double check on Campendium um, now that we've got Starlink we don't keep track and we're not going to go through the the um, internet or connectivity in all these places because it changes and so try to get the latest update from Campendium uh, showing you you know what service works best but you know starlink is pretty much usable anywhere now so spot number five so this is a bit unique for our list here and that is because there's not necessarily a national park that is right near the area. It's actually part of, or right outside, Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park. So if you've watched Forrest Gump, you know him running down the road and that big scene of the rock formations behind him or towards him. Um, that is where we're talking about in southeast Utah. So Valley of the Gods National Park, or Valley of the Gods is what we're talking about. They have some amazing free camping, 14 day stay limit is that yeah 14 yeah. day stay limit there are tons of spots if you've got um high elevation in your vehicle and can go pretty far back you know you're gonna have, you're gonna have lots of spots to pick from but i did film some of this as we were driving in so the the clip i'm going to show you now is actually a, a portion of the clip we made for our friends norm and sandy hey guys um letting them know how to get into the spot. There is a significant elevation or hill as you come in or out of this boondocking spot. So if you do not have four wheel drive, uh, you may be in some trouble because it's pretty steep. But keep an eye on this, but this is an amazing spot. And let me show you some of the uh, clip that I did for them as they were planning to arrive. What the rain forecast will be when you uh, when you get here, potentially on Wednesday or in the future. But I'll let you know if this is uh, too deep for you guys to cross. And uh, if it is, we'll be stuck over on the other side. So yeah, you just drive through this wash and we're only about 1.4 miles. As you saw when in that video, you know, there is a lot of beauty in this area. Michelle, oh what else about gosh. that spot? Yes, it's gorgeous. I mean, you have views for days. And what's so nice is there is a 17-mile scenic drive yeah. that you can take that takes you all around. You can see all the rock formations. Um, but make sure you're in a, a pretty decent, I guess, how do I word that? Uh, high vehicle? clearance, yeah. High clearance vehicle. Whoop, sorry, Marley's now playing so with fun. our uh, camera. Uh, sorry guys, Marley was <laughs> pushing the camera tripod around. I'm but telling yeah. you, Marley's a, if anybody wants him, let me know. He's for adoption, free. I'll, I'll drive him to wherever you're at. But yeah, the 17 mile scenic drive, we did that with Norman Sandy and it was, it was a great drive. Great, great views all around. Um, one thing I do want to tell you about is we did experience um, some very high wind. Maybe the highest wind that we've actually ever had in a camping yes, spot. Yes, I mean, I was just like, I just felt like I was holding on for dear life. It's that scary wind. So, you know, 
just just know that that could always happen when you're out there in your camper. There's no internet through cell service, so your only option, from what we remember, is going to be Starlink. Um, so just keep that in mind. Number six, secret spots for the wandering shores. Yep. It's going to be Island Park, Idaho. This park is right outside of Yellowstone National Park, and you have a 14-day stay limit. The boondocking spot itself is actually called Boot Jack, so if you're looking it up on Campendium, look up Boot Jack, all one word, B-O-O-T-J-A-C-K, Boot Jack. Um, so this is a really unique spot. Um, as you can see some, from some of the photos and the videos, um, ample wildlife, mm -hmm. yes. parking right next to the river. Now, you will uh, be advised that most of the sites at Boot Jack are not along the water. They're kind of up into the hill, um, uh, in the woods yeah, and among stuff the like trees, that. Yeah, yeah. If you've got a high clearance vehicle and a smaller rig, you can get down to where you can camp where we did. Um, but I'll tell you, when it rains, it gets really muddy. And we... Uh, yeah, I was worried yeah. for a good three days before we left. I was worried that we wouldn't be able to get, get back out and up the hill that we had to go up to leave. Yeah, Michelle was having a little panic moment yeah. um, when we had to leave because it was still pretty muddy. We had to drive through the mud, but we were able to make it out. We but did. it's a gorgeous spot. Moose. Um, yep, we're moose. walking in the river right by our campsite. Um, you know, you can probably see that here in the video that I'm, I'm showing you now. When, uh, when I went outside one time to do a little float down the river, turned out there was a, a bull moose just hanging out. Hanging eating. out in the water, yep. Yep, so um, this is right outside Yellowstone, probably about 35 to 40 minutes at most out uh, away from the west entrance to Yellowstone. So you actually go through West Yellowstone to enter the park, um, but you know, you've got everything you could imagine. Highly recommend the Grizzly and Wolf oh, yeah. Visitor Center or something like that inside West, or in West, the town of West Yellowstone. Great, great um, kind of scenic tour that you can take to see some of the biggest grizzly bears I've ever seen. I think the one that we saw was like close to 900 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, he was absolutely enormous. Um, so that's a really good option. But yeah, we we did a video, or actually two or three videos from that spot. So I'll uh, I'll link some of those in the video description below. Don't leave just yet. I know we just went through six, but we got a bonus for you. So we thought we'd offer up a little bonus, top secret, secret, secret number spot, but number seven spot. But this is not actually a free spot, but it's super cheap. I think it's either seven or nine dollars, and it's in the state of Florida. Yes. So we are talking about what state park, Michelle? Tiger Bay State Park, and it's near Daytona Beach. Yeah. So you're you're probably ten minutes outside Daytona Beach. Um, right near the racetrack. This is a pretty remote area back in the state park. There's, I'm guessing, maybe 15 sites. Mm -hmm. We're going to put the GPS information in the video description below. But this is a beautiful spot. We were there very early into our travels. I would mm -hmm. say it was in December of 2020. We had only been on the road probably three months at most. Mm -hmm. And this was a great spot. Um, it's seven to nine dollars. It does require reservations. I'll put that information below But highly recommend Tiger Bay State Park. So that's it folks our top six Maybe seven campsites that we found near national parks or national monuments, etc We hope you enjoyed this kind of talking head video mm -hmm. and uh, if you like this format and you like these top secret spots Please give us a thumbs up Think about subscribing to our channel. Remember, we do all kinds of campsite reviews. Go and check out thewanderingshores.com where you can find an interactive map to all the videos and um, things to do in the area, the campsite reviews, etc. from our three plus years of travel on the road. Yeah, and be sure and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear yeah. from you. See you next week, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. If you enjoy free camping and boondocking across the United States, well, we've got a lot more for you. If you haven't already checked out thewanderingshores.com, and we have an interactive Google map there where you can see all of the spots we've done campsite reviews of as well as things to do in the area. So check us out.